Good morning, good morning. Y'all come on in. Good morning, Derek, Sonia, Elizabeth, Megan. Hey, Megan. Good to see you. Hope y'all, you and the crew are doing well over there in Long Beach. You're going to be quarantined. I'd be quarantined in a house like yours. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> hey, Chastity, Aaron, good morning. Betsy, good morning. Aaron, out in D.C., good morning. Cindy, Christian, out in Houston, bro. How you doing this morning? Caroline. Dane, my man, Lane, Derek, Aaron, hey Aaron, how you doing girl, Raymond, Michelle, Kyla, good morning Kyla, Karen, Amy, Pure Heart of Marie, good morning, The Clue Life, good morning, Grace, good morning, morning Michelle, Good morning, Silas, Silas, Brad, good morning, Holla, Holla, Renee, Desiree, Kristen, Mary, Shane, Q, Nisi, Tony, what's up y'all, good morning y'all, Robin, Tammy, good morning, what does your shirt say? So red, it's our series, The Red Letters. It's the alphabet backwards spells red. Albert, thanks for filling our mornings with love and peace. You're so welcome, Fly Girl. Keisha, good morning. Britt, Britt Lauren, how you doing, girl? So good to see you again this morning. Alexander, Larry, LaRosa, hey, baby. Kara. Every breath. Cynthia, how you doing? Stephanie. Stephanie Bolenbacher, how you doing? So good to see you on here. Gina. Good morning, girl. Natalie, Jill, Tracy. Mm. What up, Jill? Gina. I saw Gina on here. Robert, Patty Pickett. Susan. Linda, Enzo, Kelly, what up, Kel? How you and the wife and the baby doing? Hey, Alyssa, Christy Joy, how you doing, Christy Joy? Yo, y'all like and share it. Share it with some friends. Let this worship. Get your heart ready this morning. Happy birthday, Gina. Happy birthday. Come on now. Got them, uh, them good jeans. Them Calhoun jeans. Kiana. Good morning. Kiana, do I have a confirmation this morning? Christine, Jamie Ellis, good morning. Morgan, Bobby, what's up, bro? Wendy, Andrea, Lila, Lila, Carol, good morning. Brett. Here it is right here. All my life you have been faithful. Yes. And all my life you have been so, so good. Tamara, how you doing, Tamara? Bear, Stacy. Monique. Mom is on here. Good morning, Mama. Emily, good morning. It's a season of abundance. You're Amen, so Emily. Season of abundance. God, you're so good. God, 
Metalla, Jesus. Come on, y'all, lift up those hearts. Y'all know the regulars. Y'all know what time it is. Let's declare his glory. Let's lift up our hearts into the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. God, you're so good. Come on, declare his glory in this place. Pastor Gray, how you doing, bro? Declare his glory in here. Come on. Good morning, good morning. He's so good. He's so good. I'm telling you, the Lord is so good this morning. Calvin Bogan, good morning. How you doing, bro? So good to see y'all in here. Y'all, we made it through another week. It's Friday. Thanks be to God. God is so good. We made it through another week. Nancy, we made it. Ronald, we made it. Uh, Reese, we made it. We made it. We made it. Another week. And God's been so good. Gwendolyn, we made it. We made it. God has been so good. Rock, we made it. Anthony, we made it. We made it. We made it. Jackie, we made it. We made it. We made it. Robin, we made it. Taryn, good morning. We made it. We made it. So I'm just encouraged, Tracy. Um, we, we, Sandy, we made it through another week. Um, and God has been so faithful. Welcome to the morning show. Good news today. We come to give you some good news. If you're new, if your friends invited you, they've been telling you about it. Listen, let me tell you something. Y'all are a trip. Y'all have been so encouraging. You've been telling friends. Some of you watch it later in the day and you reshare it. Um, every week we have more and more people. So thank you so much. Um, uh, <laughs> Thank you so, so much for your for liking, for sharing, for the encouragement. Uh, as many of you have sent me notes just saying thank you. Um, uh, Tony Yarber, what's up, bro? Otis, Sandra, so good to see y'all. It's been an amazing... This is the end of the first full week of the morning show. And I'm telling you, I thought I was going to hate it. I started it. I thought it was going to be drudgery. But I wake up every morning to gather together with y'all. Y'all encourage me. It's a good way to get my day started. I love seeing the names, the faces. We got official regulars. Some of y'all are in here every morning, regulars, or you catch it later on. So this is this is the Good News Today tribe, and I'm so thankful for you, so thankful for your encouragement, and I'm looking forward to what God's going to do with us together. I think he's working in us together. When the body of Christ comes together, we we something's happening in this space, and I'm just so, so thankful. Well, I know, I know, I know. Everybody's been wanting this song. At the end of this broadcast, we're not going to do it now because y'all leave the broadcast and then just go listen to it. At the end of this broadcast, good news today, our tribe gets it first. We're going to drop it. We're going to put the link in here. Don't put it now. We got the teams ready to put the links in. Don't put it in now. Um, we're going to drop it in. And when we leave here, you will have the song, have access to the song. And I want you to like it, share it like crazy. Get, send it to your friends. Tell them this should encourage you. Let this encourage you in this season. Let this encourage you in this season. Well, it can be a morning show without a theme song. And uh, when I tell you we got a theme song, we got a really good one. If you're a regular, you know what to do. You know what time it is. Start telling everybody everything's going to be okay. We're going to have some good news today. Hey. Hey. Everything. It's Friday, y'all. Come on. Come on, I love it. Everything's going to be okay. Tell somebody. Everything's going to be okay. Some of you going into the weekend, you need to hear it. Amy, tell them. Tell them. Coretta, tell them. Tell them. 
Uh, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Meek, tell him, tell him, tell him. Everything's going to be okay. I don't care what the enemy's trying to tell you. I don't care what your bills are trying to tell you. Some of you got laid off this week. Some of you, you got, you got the news this week. I don't know who you are, but some of you got the news this week. Josh, I was just about to ask for you. I was just about to, I was just about to ask about you. Good to see you, Josh. Josh, you stay on to the last second. Don't you leave early. Stay in here to the last second. Everything's going to be okay. Some of you lost your jobs this week. Nate Tam, some, some of you got, got your finances cut. And the anxiety level is getting higher and higher. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Don't let the devil deceive you into a time of anxiety and crisis in you. Some of you, I got a note uh, from, from somebody that said they just felt like they, they hadn't taken a breath in two weeks. Just right now, if you need to, just take a breath. You know how when you get to a part of a movie and it's scary and you just kind of auto, you, you subconsciously just hold your breath. What, what we try to do every morning in here is to remind you to breathe. <sighs> breathe. Everything's going to be okay. Breathe. Make it a prayer. Make it a... this. <sighs> breathe. Be still. And then exhale. Know that I am God. You see that? Be still. And know that I am God. Everything is going to be okay. Somebody just needs to breathe. And it seems simple. You'd be like, we woke up early this morning just to hear that. Listen, let me tell you something. If you don't breathe, you're going to die. It's simple, but if you don't be intentional about it in this season, if you don't breathe in, if you don't breathe in the grace of God and exhale the burdens of the day, I'm telling you, you're going to miss it. And if you're waiting on the lesson to start, you're already too late. I already started. Breathe. It's Friday. Breathe. You got breath in your body. Breathe. Because if you got breath in your body, that means you still got hope in your chest. Breathe. 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 God's got some good news for you today. He's still on the throne. He's still on the throne. And not only is he on the throne, but he's good. And not only is he good, but he's got plans for you. He's thought about you. He knows what he, he, he has plans for you. And guess what? The plans are good because he's good. Albert, I, but it don't feel good. And did nobody ask you about your feelings? Did nobody ask you about your feelings? Scroll, did anybody ask you about your feelings? Did nobody ask you about your feelings? His goodness ain't based on your feelings. So get out of your feelings and get in his spirit. Get out of your feelings and get into his presence. That's the line right there. That's the line. That's the line. We can shut it off right now. Let me play. Like We can close the session right now. Get out of your feelings and get into his presence. Tell somebody, get out your feelings. Did nobody ask you how you feel? Does it? What, what does he say? According to how they feel, I'm good. What chapter is that? That ain't in here. Some of you, your problem is you can't get in his presence because you refuse to get out of your feelings. You are all consumed with how it feels and you have freedom to feel, but don't put a conditional, don't put the, the, the conditions of God's goodness on your feelings. I'm not saying don't feel. And if I did, you could, you got to feel, but I'm just saying to get, don't get stuck in your feelings. You better get out of your feelings and get in his presence because you will stay in your feelings. And here's the, here's the phrase we've been saying it all week. You will be in a season of abundance, but experience scarcity because you spent more time in your feelings than in his presence. Oh, come on in here, somebody. I need, I need a couple of witnesses. I need a couple of witnesses. Y'all tell the new people what time it is. If this is their first day, tell them, talk back to me. Come on, don't play with me. You will spend this whole season in your feelings and not in his presence and you will miss the blessing that he has for you. So it's Friday. God is good. Get out your feelings. Get out your feelings. Just come on. Let's just lift that up as, I, as, as we get into the lesson. Just say, just get out your feelings. Just help somebody. Help somebody. Somebody only going to be on for three minutes anyway. Give them this word. They can go on for the rest of their day. Get out your feelings and get in the presence of God.
get out your feelings. I mean, you in your feelings. Come on, come on. Just be honest. Confess. I mean, my, as a matter of fact, can we just have a little confession? Can we just have a little confession? I'm going to get started. We ain't going to be on here long today. But can we just have a little confession? Can we just confess? If you're in your feelings, can you just say, that's me? I, that, that's me. I'm in my, I've, I've been in my feelings and I need to come out. Because some people, some people, the devil will make you think you by yourself. The devil will make you think you're the only one struggling. He'll make you think everyone else is walking around spiritually super strong and, 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 and you're the only one struggling. You ain't the only one struggling. I was in my feelings just, just two days ago. I was in my feelings bad. Watch the news, sad. I was like, Lord, what is it? So I've been in my feelings. So if that's you, just raise your little hand. Say, I'm in my feelings. I've been in my feelings. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth. Anybody willing to confess? Come on. Come on. Let me see. Let me see. That's me. I'll come on. That's what I'm talking about. Let's tell the truth. Let's tell the truth. Let's not come in here and act like we got it all together. That's me. I, I see you, Gina. Megan, I see you. Thank you for telling the truth. Come on. That's me. That's me. Come on. Come on. Get out your feelings. Come on. In my feelings. Come on. If you're in your feelings, come on. That's me. Latala, I see you. Robin, I see you. That's me. That, yeah, confession is good for the soul. Can we just tell the truth? It's too early in the morning for me. Y'all on the East Coast. I know y'all been up for a while. It's too early in the morning for me to get up here and in front and BS and act like we got it all together. No, we are here together because we are jacked up and we desperately need the presence of God. So get out your feelings, friends. I want to encourage you. Get out your feelings. And, and hey, I'm encouraging you today. Next week, you probably don't have to encourage me. Albert, get out your feelings. It's a day-to-day -day decision to not be consumed with our feelings, but to be consumed with the faith that pushes us into the presence of God. Don't be driven by feelings. Be driven by faith. I know we talk a lot about fear, but fear, uh, don't be driven by fear. Don't be driven by your feelings. Be driven by faith. Get out your feelings and get in the presence of God. Um, when we, when our kids were going to school back in the good old days, um, one of the biggest challenges of, um, of, of, of our kids and going to school is our, our girls have zero period, which means they have a class that starts before first period called zero period. And our call, our wake up time was 5.30 a.m. Uh, John Bryson, what's up, bro? Uh, our wake up time was 5.30 a.m., um, and at 5.30 in the morning, Eve, uh, good morning, uh, Eve, we would have to, um, we'd have to wake up, pack lunches, get dressed, get homework all in there and, um, and get our kids to school. We have to leave the house by like 6.20, 6.30 to get them there on time. Now, this is a terrible part of the morning. I, I hate the mornings. You already know that. And my, my wife ain't a big mornings fan either. But my wife, she's such an amazing mother and she loves the kids. She loves our kids way more than I do. Don't tell them that. But she just does because the stuff that she just does for them, I just be like, I ain't, I, I ain't doing that. Uh -uh. They'll be all right. That, that's, that's my parenting. My parenting motto is they'll be all right. They'll be all right. But my wife is not like that. Thank God. And my kids will really appreciate that. She gets up, um, and especially before they got older, she would she would pack their lunches. Uh, so, so Isaac is now, let's, let's just take Isaac. Isaac, and, and she'd slice apples and um, make sandwiches and get them in before he could come and do it himself and get grapes and, and little snacks and little yogurt packets and stuff. And I mean, he'd have layers because she, she, she would have thought through his whole day and knows that at three o'clock he's gonna have snack time after lunch, and then when she picks him up, he's gonna be hungry. So I'm gonna put some little snacks in there for when the pick. She just go through the whole day, think through all of his nutritional needs, and pack it in the lunch. She she she's amazing. I'd be like, they'll be all right. They got food at school, don't they? They ain't got no, you know. But no, no, no. She would make sure that beverage is cold water in a thermos, and so it can stay cold. And ice packs so the grapes can stay up. She, she'd have it laid out. She'd go through all of that tedious work, get everybody loaded up in the car, get leave out, head out, uh, and we take turns, but most of the time she's dropping them off. As I'm getting ready to go to work or go to a meeting or something like that, I'll walk in the kitchen, and when I walk in the kitchen, I'll see this. And I'll be like, um, ain't this, ain't this Isaac's Lunch? I thought, uh, honey, does Isaac, Isaac have his lunch? She said, Isaac, where's your lunch? And he'd look around and then he'd inevitably, inevitably say, um, I left it on the table. Now, 
This, this is why I'd be like, they'll be all right. Because she's she's gone through this tedious work early in the morning to cut apples, make bread, put in grapes, get chilled cool water, ice pack so that the grapes can stay. All, she go, she's gone through all of that. She's thought through your whole day to see everything that you needed and she has provided it for you. And instead of taking what she's provided for you, you have left what she's provided for you on the table. Do you see me coming? Do you see me coming? If you get it early, we can get to this song release uh, way sooner. Do you see me coming? What I'm telling you is God has provided for you. If a good mama can do that for Isaac, imagine what a good father, a good heavenly father does for you. It's Friday. God has prepared 24 hours of his presence, his provision, his power. He's thought through every hour of the day. Nothing happens today that he's going to be surprised by. He's prepared everything you need for the whole day. He's thought through all of your needs, the things that you know about and the things that you don't know about. He's thought through them all. What a shame if you leave it on the table. What a shame if you, if you don't take what he's provided and consume it all. What, what a shame for you to leave, start your day and just start running and be so consumed with, with what you think is important through the day that you leave what he's provided for you on the table. In Exodus 16, it's interesting. Verse 17, it says, the Israelites did as they were told. Y'all see what I did there? I took my glasses off so I could read. That's my age. I know I know. we talked about this before. We got some other witnesses out there. Somebody else got to take your glasses off so you can see? Come on now. Get your life. That's what it's about in this season. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the Omar, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, no one is to keep any, any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. God says, I've thought through today and I'm giving you manna and notice everybody had what they needed and they all didn't have the same proportion, but they all had what they needed. Some got a lot and that's what they needed. They got a lot. Some had a, got a little and it was fine. They got a little. That's all they needed. But Debbie, something happened. Lloyda, something happened. Um, um, uh, uh, Andrea, something happened because instead of eating it all and consuming everything that God provided, they left some on the table. They left it on the table as if to say, I'm going to come back to that tomorrow or I'm, a, I'm not going to eat it all. I'm going to store up some. And God is saying, I gave you what you needed for today. Why are you hustling up for tomorrow? If I provided it today, I'm going to provide it again tomorrow. Why are you leaving on the table what I provided for you today? What's up with that? Are you that much of a control freak? Or are you so traumatized that you don't trust me that I'm going to give you what you need for tomorrow? That you you eating what you, you eating some and then ravishing some, putting some away for the, for what 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 are, what are you doing? It's a trust issue. Don't you trust me? God is saying. Why why are you? Why are you tripping at this level? Why are you stressed out and got this much anxiety about my provision for you? I'm going to provide for you. You see those birds run, flying around out there? I provide for those birds. Now, no disrespect to the birds. I love the birds. I created them. But let me tell you something. I made you in my image. I ain't make that bird in my image. I made you in my image. So if I provided for that bird, don't you think I'm going to provide for you who I made in my image? Why are you tripping? 
Why, why are you tripping? I had a friend, Mike, who would take in um, foster kids and invite them to be a part of their family. Um, and he talks about his little boy when he brought him home and they were adopting him to, to just be there at his house. But he had been in so many abusive homes and it, it just had a, just a devastating story. He was only five or six years old. It was interesting, he would only eat half of his food and he would secretly, although he couldn't hide very well, he was five years old, secretly take pieces of bread and stick it in his pocket. Take, um, take the meat, eat half of it, and kind of hide and stick it in his pocket. Baffled, they called, before they reacted to it, they called the social worker and said, hey, we're seeing this behavior, because they warned them that they would, it would be some behavioral challenges. So they, they called him and said, he's, he's stealing food. They said, oh yeah, this is common. He was at a house where they didn't let him eat and they, they were starving the children. They only ate once a day. So he's used to a regiment where he only eats once a day. So he's hiding the food so that he can have some for him later in the day. So my friend Mike had to go and sit down and talk to him and say, hey, he opened up all the pantries opened up the refrigerator, walked him through the deep freezer and said, all of this is yours. And you can eat whenever you like. All of this is yours. It's yours to consume. You don't have to hide food. You don't have to starve yourself and ration your food. I'm going to give you everything you need for every day that you're here. And you're going to be here a long, long time. Maybe you... Maybe you're so used to living in scarcity and fear and in your feelings that if you would tell the truth, you don't really trust God to be good every day. You don't really trust him to provide the manna. You think maybe he's going to pull some trick and say, no, I want to say, no. So he says, in order to teach you to trust me, what you don't eat will go bad. So they woke up in the morning Hey, Brian and Aisha, they, they woke up and maggots was in what they tried to store up. Because he said, because I'm going to teach you to trust me. I'm going to teach you to walk with me and I'm, and I'm going to do it every day. So you'll know that that's not a day of your life when I'm not walking with you. That's not a day in your life when I'm not providing for you. Now, whether or not you eat it all is up to you. But this bag is going to be filled with my purpose, my plan and my promises and my provision for you every single day. You can wake up and leave it on the table if you want to. But it's here because I'm a good father. And that's what a good father does. He prepares the day for his children. Children. Don't leave it on the table. God has thought through every hour, every minute, every second of this day. He's put in here the patience that you need. He's put in here the encouragement that you need. He's put in here the hope that you need. He's put in here the peace that you need. He's put in here the love that you need. Don't leave it on the table. Start your morning saying, God, I want everything you got for me. I want to go after it. So I'm going to start my day with you and I'm going to let you lead me and guide me through the day. That's why you got to pray. That's why you got to spend time with with him because he gets you ready for the day because he already knows what's coming. You don't. So you ended up at a, in a fight and cussing somebody out around two o'clock because at 7 a.m. you didn't start your day being reminded of who you are and whose you are. So so by two o'clock, you acting like you ain't a son of God. You acting like you a son of the, something else. Uh, come on in here, somebody. Hello. But he would have prepared you in the morning. He would have whispered and says, hey, regardless of what comes, you're my son. You're my beloved and your identity is in me. And that fresh word would have would have would have been what would have come out when somebody offended you. But instead of that word coming out, your flesh came out. Because what are we trying to do? What are we trying to do? Let's go back to it. Not reacting in our flesh, but responding in the spirit. Well, you can't respond in the spirit if you ain't spent time in the spirit. 
You can't respond in the spirit if you ain't spent time there. He says, I put in your lunch bag the patience that you needed so you wouldn't get frustrated at 117 and say something that you then got to come back and apologize for. I put in your bag the patience that you needed for that. I was going to give that. I, I, you had it, but you left it on the table. Don't spend these days in quarantine not consuming everything that God has for you, not consuming uh, everything God has for you. Um, a part of it is um, you got to be hungry for what God has for you. You got to be hungry for what God has for you. Some of us, we, um, my kids are tripped. Sometimes they'll um, they'll be like, we dinner time and we got food on the table and and they eat just a little bit. They eat just a little bit. And they'll be like, I'll be like, you're not gonna eat all you it's like, I'm not I'm not hungry anymore. I'm not hungry anymore. I'm not hungry anymore. I was like, oh okay then, okay. Then they come back two minutes later. Um, can I have some ice cream? Now you just said you weren't hungry. One of my kids said this one time. They was like, no 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 I wasn't hungry for that. I'm hungry for ice cream. I just went hungry for that. Some of you, the reason you don't fully receive and consume everything God has for you because you wasn't hungry for what he has. You hungry for ice cream. You hungry for fleshly things. You're not hungry for the things of the spirit. And you have... You have starved the spiritual hunger and thirst. You know how Sprite says, obey your thirst? Well, some of you, you have ignored your spiritual thirst and you wonder why you go through the day thirsty. You wonder why you show up in relationships thirsty. You wonder why you're living a thirsty life because you're ignoring your spiritual thirst and only he can satisfy. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. You don't obey your thirst, you ignore your thirst, and then you wonder why you're thirsty. You got to start to develop a thirst and a hunger in this season. In this season, you got to start to develop a thirst and a hunger, watch this, for righteousness, for God's plan for your life. You're thirsty for, you, you, you're still thirsty and hungry. You still got a, a, a appetite that's driven by your flesh, and I get it. We all do, right? We are no one... So I get that, but you got to start to you got to start to desire God's plan and God's will over your life above yours. It, it has to start. You got to start desiring it because if you don't start thirsting for Him, there's no way you're going to consume all He has for you because it's going to come in conflict with your flesh. Do, do you understand? You got to start thirsting for Him. What does that look like? You kind of got to start to develop your palate. You got to develop your palate. That's a term I learned when I first moved to um to southern california back in mississippi um back in mississippi we didn't um we didn't drink i grew up in holiness and and y'all holiness is right I, I grew up in holiness um and uh we we couldn't drink you couldn't smoke you couldn't chew or date girls that do um that, that was a whole thing christians did not drink in, in in holiness, we did not drink. We didn't believe that. And y'all, I moved to California, and I started working at this church. Um, that's like a non it's, it's a non denominational church, but it's kind of like a you know, it's not a holiness church at all. Predominantly white. I remember going to the first time to their house for dinner, to somebody's house for dinner, this white folk person's house, and we sit down for dinner, and they go to the church. This, this is a Christian, and I'm the pastor at the church. I'm one of the pastors at the church. They sit down and they say, um, Pastor, would you like a glass of wine? I, I was faced with a theological conundrum. What, what shall I do? I was raised in holiness and, and drinking this wine is sinful. But here I am and I've been invited to partake by another Christian brother and dare not, I, I, I dare not seem um, ungrateful for their hospitality. So for the sake of the gospel, I said, I think I will have a glass of red wine. And uh, and I realize, you know, uh, good Christians out here in California, we drink wine all the time. So I have acclimated my theological posture to the geographical realities that I find myself in. 
Uh, and I, I appreciated a good glass of wine. Come on in here, somebody. Um, uh, and but, but what happened was, I mean, to be honest, the first time I tasted it, it really wasn't good. Uh, it was, I, I was just like, yo, it's... And, you know, they'd be all like... Hmm, yes, yeah, smell it and the oh you can smell this is probably uh these these grapes were groomed in the south side of the field in northern California. You know what I mean? Because they could feel all this. I was like, I can't smell nothing. I just maybe maybe it's my allergies or something. I can't smell. Mm-hmm. But then I taste, you know, and they be like, mm, can't you taste that? Uh, I can't taste. It's nasty to me, but is what you do. So what what happened was I had an undeveloped palate. I had an immature palate. My palate could not appreciate the 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 tones and the tenors of the grapes and the seasoning and the seed. You know, I, I just didn't have an appreciation for it. So they said, so so, so I, I left that house and I started talking to somebody else because they didn't want to be embarrassed. I was like, yo, bro, this stuff is nasty. They said, what well, you got? You just gotta just taste it and just keep drinking. And you develop a palate. And many years later, your boy. Oh yeah, see that? Like I'm, I'm up in there, like, and I've developed my palate, and I, I can appreciate a good glass of wine because my palate has been developed. Guess what I'm saying is, spiritually, you probably need to start developing your palate in this season so you can appreciate the tones and the tenor of God's goodness and righteousness, even when it comes packaged in the desert. Come on in here, somebody. E. Mace, my man, come on, help me in here, somebody. The reason, the reason why you can't appreciate God's goodness in this season, maybe it's because you got an underdeveloped palate and he's saying, I need you to sit down at the table and feast on me, feast on my word, feast in my presence every morning so I can develop your immature palate so you can appreciate what it is that I'm providing for you. Because if you knew how good this was, you wouldn't leave it on the table. You'd eat it all. God says, I've gone through your day. I've prepared a way for you. Eat it all. Eat it all. Don't leave it on the table. Don't ration. You're not in an abusive relationship. You ain't in abusive Egypt. You're in the blessed place of the kingdom of God. Eat it all today and I'll provide for you again tomorrow. It's an insult when you don't eat all my food, when you don't eat all what I provide for you, when you don't consume fully what I provided for you today. Don't insult the chef. Eat it all. I've got fresh manna. You got bread appearing like dew on the ground. Eat it all. Develop your palate. Develop your palate for righteousness. D- develop a palate for prayer. Learn, learn to appreciate praying with God. Some of you are so intimidated by prayer, don't want to pray. You should walk all day just having a conversation with God, inviting God to speak into your life, inviting God to show you where you was wrong, inviting him into every conversation. Lord, did I, what, did I go too far? Was I inappropriate? Was I kind? Did I show grace? And I'm, I'm not saying get in your head and be second guessing yourself. I'm just saying walk with God as though he's a best friend. I said, no, God, that meeting went crazy. I didn't see that coming. Lord, Lord, tell me how to minister to my kids. What's going on? Help me. Give me eyes to see them. Because right now I just see something that ain't listening to what I'm saying. There's got to be more to see than what I'm saying. Give me eyes to see. Help me to see my husband. I can't see. All I'm seeing is someone that can't put the toilet seat down and getting on my nerves. Uh, Help. There's more. There's more. than Help me see more. Help me see more. Prayer, prayer, uh, worship. Lord, give me a heart for worship where I just learn to adore you. I practice adoration. I practice gratitude. And I just, oh, throughout the day, thank you, Lord. I see news that are, that's bad on TV. I say, thank you, Lord. God, you're so good. You're so faithful. Oh, move. You intercede for people. And as you hear stuff that's going on, say, ooh, that's terrible. No, say, ooh, I'm going to be praying for you. And practice, uh, get a posture, develop a palette of prayer, of intercession, of adoration, of, of gratitude, a prayer of confession. Ooh, I messed that up, Jesus. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me for my thoughts. Jesus. Practice prayer, and you'll develop a palate to where when you experience prayer, you say, oh, yeah, I'm just walking in the fullness of prayer, of adoration. I can appreciate a prayer. Develop a prayer. Watch this life. See, some of you, you spent more time developing a prayer time, and what you need is a prayer life. What you need is a prayer life. It's not about 10 minutes in a corner of your house. That's great. I ain't knocking that. But 
what happens is if you compartmentalize that and then you check off that box, then you've missed God. God is not a box to be checked off. He's a God to be rested in. Are, are y'all in here with me today? Y'all hear me? So, so develop a palette of prayer. Develop a palette, a palette of, of worshiping and honoring God. Watch this. Develop a palette for Christian community. Some of you, you got a palette and you can only appreciate isolation. Leonce, they're doing it alone. Some, 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 some of you, 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 you don't have a palette for community. You do life alone. And that's why this season for some of you is so hard because all of your relationships and their shallowness has been exposed. And he's sitting around and he's like, I really, I'm really not deep with anybody, but I'm shallow with everybody. I'm really out here doing it on my own. No one knows what I'm struggling with. No one knows about my insecurities. No one knows about my weaknesses. No one knows about my joys and celebrations. This is not that community is only there for when things are bad. When you get, when you get great news, you ain't even got nobody to call to celebrate. You ain't got nobody to call to celebrate. Thank you, Leon. Even Jesus longed for community. Jesus, the first thing Jesus did, he was like, okay, if I'm going to do this ministry thing and I'm going to save the world, I'm going to need some friends. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, James, y'all come over here. I need a community. I need some community around me because I'm going to have some good days where we're going to celebrate blind Bartimaeus and we're going to have some rough days. And I'm going to be wrestling with my death and I'm going to need to talk to my friends about it. Who do you say I am? Who do people say I am? That's Jesus working it out emotionally. He's working it out saying, I'm going through something heavy, fellas. Come here and talk to me. What, what they saying about me, y'all? Who, who do they say I am? Now, homeboys, who, who do you say I am? Peter, thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ, my, my, my friend. Uh, come on, some of y'all caught that. My friend. Um, and he says to Peter, my friend. And then, but then let's keep it real. Community is hard because Jesus is like, okay, so I'm, I'm about to, I'm, I'm going to the cross y'all and I'm going to die. And Peter was like, yo, Jesus, man, I rebuke that in the name of, in, in the name of, in your name. I rebuke that in Jesus name. And it's like, so a part of community is you have times where it's like, my. And then you got times it's like, yo, bro, get behind me. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you are tripping right now. That's the, that's the beautiful thing about community. We get to walk with one another in the ups and downs. Some of you need to develop a palette for Christian community. You ain't got no friends. And you struggle with being a good friend. Because you've been in such abusive relationships. You're so self-centered and so guarded. And it's all about you and protecting yourself. You don't know how to walk in vulnerability. You don't know how to invite other people into your broken places because you want to put on a front that you got it all together when we all know that you don't. So when you say it out loud, the only one that's surprised is you. Come on and hear somebody. All right, I got to wrap it up. I got to uh, develop your palate. Work on developing your palate. God has provided on the table. Eat it all. Eat it all. Eat it all. Uh, develop your palate for God's word for community, for prayer. I'll wrap up. I can talk about this all day. Um, the, other, the other thing in, 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 uh, in Exodus 16, y'all should just sit in this. We've been sitting in it all week. I hope you're reading it and sitting in, sitting with it. Uh, you should sit with it and just read it in its entirety. Another part around verse 34, it says, take an omar of manna and keep it for the generation to come so they can see the bread I gave you to eat in the wilderness when I brought you out of Egypt. As I close this last, this last little thing just grabbed me today. It grabbed me. He says, take, take some of the manna. And the, and the miracles are just, I mean, we can do a whole another week on just the miracles. Take the manna that for you spoils overnight. But take it and I want you to put it in a bottle and put it, in, in, put it with the covenant in the, in, the, in the Ten Commandments and it'll last for a generation. It'll last for a generation. Take it. And he's saying, and what he's saying is, I want the next generation to see this. I want them to see this is, this is not just for you. This is not just what's going on right now. This is a generational gift. What if God is not trying to get us through this season? 
But what if God is trying to give us a generational blessing? What if what he's doing while we're in quarantine is giving us, making a spiritual deposit in us that will impact a generation to come? What if it's not just about the next six weeks? What if it's not just about the next six months? What if it's not just about 2020? What if it's not even just about the decade? What if he's trying to give us a generational blessing? What you eat and what you feast off of now will shape a whole generation. The next generation will come and they will talk about our faith in this season and it will shape a generation. Know that God ain't just trying to get you through today. He's trying to get you on a regimen and a lifestyle that will shape a whole generation. Your children's children will have faith. But you can't pass on a legacy of faith if you ain't got a legacy of faith. You can't pass on a legacy of faith if you ain't got a faith. And a faith that's tied to a legacy, not faith that's tied to moments. Moments add up. To a legacy and a legacy is strong enough and solid enough to be passed on. I don't want to just give my kids a memory. I want to give them a legacy. And I'm giving you a generational blessing in this season. And I'm going to invest in you something that will stand throughout generations. What if he's saying, y'all, before now you were running and the body of Christ was weak and shallow and consumed with the world. I brought them together, quarantined them so that they may go deep diving in the word, develop a posture and a practice of my presence where they're consuming everything every day, trusting me, walking with me. And what I do is so divine that it'll be worthy to be passed on to the next generation. They will know our parents were in the wilderness and God gave them bread every day. I need you to stop thinking about this year. I need you to stop thinking about the next 10, six weeks. I need you to stop thinking about that. And I need you to start thinking about the generation. I need you to start thinking about the legacy. I want you to start thinking about who you will be. And that God is building something. Think, let's just say, let's not stretch it. Let's just take 10 years from now. Who do you want to be? Can I tell you, your God is writing that story right now. You got hopes, you got dreams. I'm telling you, God got hopes and God's got dreams. Surrender yours and receive his. Because he's trying to give you a generational blessing. Something that will outlive you, something that will outlast you. Something that the fullness of it, you won't even experience. You won't even see the full because God, God is doing so much and is so much bigger than you in this season. He's brought you here so that his glory may display it on the earth. What if it's a generational blessing he's trying to get through you? Oh, that messed me up. That messed me up. I was like, God, I've been thinking too small. I've been thinking too small. I've been thinking about me and how to get my finances right, how to get through the day. He's like, no, 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 no. You're thinking too small. I'm trying to get a generational blessing through you. I'm not just trying to get you pay your mortgage this month. Is that, is that, you just believe me for the mortgage? Believe me for a generation. I'm trying to do something great through you. Yes, you, you ain't a pastor. You ain't been a seminary. You're not, but no, but I still, my hand is on you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a generational blessing through you. So eat all of it because I'm building you up for something. Last thing, verse 35, the Israelites ate manna 40 years until they came to a land that was settled. They ate manna until they reached the border of Canaan. They walked out and every morning for 40 years, they ate from God's hand to their mouth. He did it for 40 years. We've got a God that's faithful. 40 years he's been doing. Think, of, think about, for a moment, just go here with me as we close. Think about you in the last quarter of your life. 
maybe your 80s, your 90s, whatever, whatever you think that last quarter will look like. Think about you in that last quarter. I think about the children of Israel and those that were at the age where they spent the whole 40 years there when they got to Canaan. And they're in Canaan. Imagine them sitting on their front porch in the rocking chair. I know they didn't have rocking chairs back then, but just go with the imagery. They're on the front porch, rocking in a chair, and they're reflecting about the old days where they'd walk outside and bread would be in the yard. And they'd think about the old days when they'd go down in the evening and meat would be provided. In how 40 years they saw the faithfulness of God and every day they ate it all. I'd imagine they'd say something like this. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. He's trying to give you a generational, a life blessing, not a weekly blessing, not a daily blessing, but a life. He's trying to bless your life. He's trying to give you a testimony. So in the last season of your life, the final quarter of your life, you will be able to say all my life, you have been faithful. Not that one time, but every time, my whole life, you have been faithful. He's trying to give you a testimony. Don't leave your testimony on the table. As we close this week, as we release this song, I pray that it'll bless you. Give me the final moments and I want you to listen to the words of this song. And listen to the words from this, from the perspective of the final season of your life. This is the testimony that God is trying to give you as you meet him daily for manna and meat. Listen to these words as your older self in the latter season of your life. He's trying to give you a testimony in this season. Say it. Oh, your mercy never fails me. Listen to this. And all my days I've been held in your hand. All my days I've been held in your hand. The moment that I wake up. Manna on the ground. I lay my head. Meat on the ground. Oh, I will sing. I'll sing. Of the goodness of God. I will, Josh. Listen to this. 40 years you've been providing. All my life you have been so, so good. So this is my commitment. Every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because you blessed my life. You gave me a generational blessing. And my whole life has been marked by your presence. I love your voice because I've, I've palated. My palate has developed to your voice. In darkest night, you are close like no one. Listen to this line. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I've known you as a father and a friend. I've lived in the goodness. I didn't leave it on the table. I consumed it all. So all my life. This is the testimony he wants you to have. And so with every breath, come on. Of every day, of every second, I will sing of the goodness. Oh, come on. I need you to worship in your house right now. Come on. 40 years you fed me. Turn around and look behind you. You will see his goodness. It's been running after you your whole life.
Look back over your life. His goodness is right there. 40 years, manna in the morning and meat at night. Come on. He's trying to give you a testimony. Come on, let's worship together, tribe. Come on. Seven years for me, 43 years. It's been 43 years. How many years has his goodness been running after you? 62 years. Come on, I see it. It's running after me. Forty years it's been coming after me. He's been feeding me for 40 years. 33 years, 52 years. I see it. 30, 30, 38 years, 28 years, 36 years, 48 years, 19 years, 36 years. Let's lift it up. It's Friday. It's been a good week. God's been with us every step of the way. As we close this week, we just declare the goodness of God. In our house, we declare the goodness of God. In our home, in, in quarantine, in our city, in our state, we declare the goodness of God. We got 63 years behind us. We got 40 years behind us. We, we know it. We can speak with authority. Declare it in your home, in your family, in your body, in your health. God is so good. Well, we're releasing the song now. You can go to the Fellowship uh, YouTube channel. Uh, look up Fellowship. I think they're going to put links in here uh, on our pages. You'll be able to find links. Or we're going to link it to there. And you'll be able to see that. God bless you. Y'all, this is crazy. This is the longest one I've ever done. I didn't even mean to go this long. But God has been so good. And God's giving us a generational blessing. He's changing your story. So receive it, walk in it. God bless you, y'all. Have a great week. Have a great week. It won't be on iTunes now, but it'll be on iTunes soon. God bless y'all. Have a good week. Everything is going to be okay this week. There it is right there. There's the link. There's the link. Link is on my Instagram page. There it is on the Facebook Live. There's the link. Loida, Loida has the link on there. Y'all, everything's gonna be okay. Grab that link. Bless you, Aura, Sylvia. God bless you. Y'all have a great week. Y'all have a great week.